Hey everybody, today we're gonna to finish up our conversation about tries, a data structure for storing searchable sorted sets of symbolic strings. Hey folks, welcome back. Sorry for the last video's cliffhanger. Today we're going to finish up our try data structure. If you didn't see the previous video, you should check it out. If you have no idea what trees are or tries or lookup tables or any of the things that build up to this, or if this video feels like a conversation that you're joining in the middle, there are a bunch of other videos you might wanna check out. I put links down in the description. Feel free to pause this video, go watch those, and then come back. You might have a better experience. Source code, as always, is available through Patreon, and the source code for this video is basically half done because we started it in the previous one. So last time we talked about tries and we started building one, here is the code that we were looking looking at. Here, let me adjust this down a little. So just a quick recap, we defined our node structure here, and we created functions that will create nodes and will insert a string into our try. And we also made a recursive function down here that would print out our try. Okay, and then down here in main, we just created one and we just tested it out. We inserted a couple of things and we printed out our try and that all seems to work. What we didn't do is we didn't add search and we didn't add delete. And so those are the two things that I wanna add today to our implementation. So search, of course, is critical since that's the main point of a try. The whole, the try name actually comes from retrieval. The whole point is to actually like find out whether something is in a try or not. We wanna be able to quickly find out whether or not a particular string is in our sorted set of searchable symbolic strings. And so today we wanna to make a function to do that. So let's make a search function. Uh, let's have it return a bool that's gonna be true if it's in there and false if it's not. We'll call this search try. And we're going to pass in a try node. That's just a node to our tree. It's going to be the, the root. And then we're going to pass in our signed text. Now this, you would have noticed from the last time, basically the reason for the signed text is purely because we want, we're going to convert this to unsigned. In fact, let's do that really quick. Just call this text and equal to unsigned char signed text. Now the reason for this is just simply so that we don't get uh, negative indexes into our lookup table because that would cause weird memory problems. It would definitely cause things to not work the way we want it to. I'm also going to do like I did before. I'm going to create a length variable and we're going to just grab the length of our text and that's gonna help us down below. Now, for those of you that saw the last video, you're gonna notice that search feels a lot like insert. And that's because, I mean, insert, in order to insert, we were going through the try and actually trying to, I mean, in a way we were searching and then adding if the thing that we were trying to add wasn't already there. So once again, we're also going to need a temporary node and we're gonna set it equal to root. And so this beginning looks just like insert uh, and just like insert, we're also going to use a for loop here. Uh, same basic style of operation. We know how long the string is that we're working with. And so we're just gonna run through it character by character. Also, similarly, we're gonna have an if statement. It says if the, the temporary nodes children, basically we're gonna look at the symbol, the ith symbol in the string, and if the child node at that point, if it's null, then at this point we know that it really isn't contained here. So before we added nodes because we were actually trying to insert, in this case we're searching. So in this case, it's not here and we can just return false anytime we see this, okay? And then of course, as before, we're gonna do the same thing where we just set temp equal to the ith child or the text ith child. Basically, yeah, so so in case you're wondering, there's a lot going on here, right? Um, one way that I could have written this, so I'm writing this all in one line, but I could have said something like, you know, character C, well, it would be unsigned character C equals text sub i. So I'm basically grabbing the ith character and then just pass that in as the index. That's basically the lookup table. You pass in the character and it gives you the pointer to the child. Okay. To keep my code concise, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to, let's go back to the way it was and we'll keep this just like this. But anyway, I wish, just in case I'm doing a lot on one line and that confuses anyone, I want to just make clear what's going on. Okay. Now, basically, once we get to the end of this for loop, if we haven't returned false, meaning that we ran into a node that wasn't there, at this point, we know that we didn't return. So there are enough nodes, this child could be there. Now, the only thing we need to do is check the terminal value. And for this, I can just return temp terminal. 
And that's because if terminal is true, then it is there. So I'll return true. If temp terminal is false, then that means that it's not there. Even though the node was there, it hasn't been added, so, so we'll return false. And that is all we need to do for our search try function. This will actually search our try and it'll return true if the thing we're searching for is there and false if it's not. But let's not make assumptions and take my word for it. Let's go down into main and let's actually test this out. So really quick, let's just put a few, let's print a um, search for cattle. And let's print out the value that's gonna be my Boolean when it comes back. And we'll just call search try root cattle. And let's search for a few others. Let's search for cattle and we'll search for cat. So we'll do one that actually is at the end. It's kind of a leaf node of the tree and one that's in the middle. And let's also search for kitten, which is not there. So, so this one, it should not be found. Okay, so this should just give us a few different options, a way for us to actually see whether search is working. Let's compile it. And if we run it, you can see, yes, it finds cattle, it finds cat, and it doesn't find kitten. So things are working the way we expect. Okay, so search seems to work. Now let's look into deleting words from the try. This is probably the most complicated operation that we're going to look at. It's not too bad, but there are a few more things to keep straight. So let's go up and see if we can create a delete function. So again, we're gonna return bool from this delete function. I'm gonna call this delete key. It's gonna delete a string, or let's let's call it delete string, delete str. Um, again, we're going to take in a try node double pointer. So again, this is just like an insert because we may have to actually change the value of root. And we're gonna pass in, once again, a character pointer that we're gonna call sign text, okay? Again, nothing too complicated that. The whole reason is I wanna pass in a standard character pointer, but they can be signed, and so that's annoying for this case. So let's just change this again to text, unsign character pointer. Okay, and we're going to also have a result variable that we're gonna start out as false, meaning we didn't delete anything. So again, so we got, this is gonna, we're gonna return a result. It's gonna be false if we didn't return something, true if we did return something. And I'm gonna implement this delete function as a recursive function as well. It just makes some things a little bit easier. There are other ways to do it. So this is just one way. This is the way I'm gonna do it today. But so I'm going to try to do this by creating another recursive function. And this delete str function is simply going to be our wrapper around that function. Okay, so my recursive function down here is going to take in a pointer. So let, let's call this delete str rec recursive. And we're gonna pass in, like we're gonna pass in the root. Well, we'll just pass in a single pointer in this case. And we're gonna pass in the text that we're trying to delete. And we're also going to pass in a pointer to a Boolean. So that's the result. So we're gonna pass in the address of the result. And that's going to allow this recursive function to change the result. And then I'm going to actually assign whatever this delete str rec returns, that's going to be assigned to my root. Okay, one other case that I'm gonna handle up here as well is that if the root happens to be null from the beginning, we can just return false. We can save ourselves the time. Okay, now you may wonder why I assigned root to here, why I'm actually assigning a pointer. And we're gonna look at that just here in a minute. I don't wanna confuse you, um, but this is a technique that allows me to pass in a single pointer into this recursive function but still be able to change the root value in case all the nodes below it get deleted and I just need to set root equal to null, this will totally work. So I hope this isn't too confusing. I hope it makes sense as we start to build out our recursive function, but this is just another way to allow the root node to change. And hopefully that'll make plenty of sense up above as we finish up the code. But then basically here, I'm just gonna return the result. And you might be thinking, where was that set? Well, it's gonna be set in my recursive function here. So let's just, copy this, we'll come up here and actually start implementing this. And this is gonna be a try node, call it root. I'm actually just gonna call it node, unsign character pointer text. And this is going to be a Boolean pointer called result. Okay, and we're gonna return a try node pointer. Okay, and rather than result, I'm gonna change this to deleted, just to make things a little more readable. Now down here, we're going to say, if the node equals null, then return node, okay? So basically that's saying, if, if you passed in a null pointer into here, then just return the node. Now, we actually technically don't need this, I don't think, because we checked for it right here, but you know, it doesn't hurt. I'll just leave it in for now. 
We could take it out later if we wanted. It would make things slightly faster. Okay, so now let's look at a second base case here, which is that we've reached the end of a string. So you've passed in a string that basically is empty. What this is gonna look like is you're gonna say, if text, if the character that text points to happens to equal the null character, then we know that we've reached the end of the string. We've reached the end of the input string. And the reason we got to this point is that each time I recurse, I'm going to remove a single character from the front of the array. And I'm gonna show you how that's gonna work in a second. But when we reach this case where our text starts with the null character, then we know we've reached the end. So here, what I'm gonna do is just check to see if the node that I'm pointing to is actually terminal. Okay, so if it is, it means the string is actually in the try and we can delete it. So if it is, then what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I actually wanna delete it. So what I'm gonna do is set the node's terminal value equal to false. And then I'm gonna set deleted equals true, okay? So again, I'm passing in a pointer so that I can change this and it'll actually be reflected outside of the function. And at this point, if I don't care about space, the node is deleted. The node's basically gone. If I search for it, it won't be here, but I do wanna clean up nodes if I don't need them anymore. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do right here, just logically thinking through it right here, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, let's say we have a function that is like node has children. Basically, if the node that I'm looking at has no children, so I just deleted something and it has no child nodes, then I actually want to free this node and let's free it up. And then I want to set that node equal to null. Okay. Now you say, wait a minute, setting that equal to null isn't going to have any effect because it's a single pointer, whatever, that's fine. But what I'm going to do down here is just return node. And so you remember that when we return, basically we're returning a try node and that's going to replace the original node pointer. So this is going to be just fine. Now we're done with our base cases. Now what we need to do is just recurse. Okay. So if we're not at the end of the string, what we're gonna do is say no children. Again, we're gonna pass in the symbol for the first character. Before we did ith character, but this is the first one, that's fine. And I copy this really quick. And then we're going to just recursively call our delete string rec. And we're gonna pass in this node. So we're gonna pass in the child node. And then we're gonna return one character. We're gonna do it like this, just by adding one to the pointer. And then we're also gonna pass in the deleted variable, this pointer, just so that they can update on a recursive call, whether it's been deleted or not. Now, this little pointer arithmetic that I did here might confuse some of you. I could just as easily have made a copy of the text and copied all but the first character. But instead, since I'm not actually changing the text at all in these recursive calls, I'm just moving the pointer over one. And so that next recursion step will have the same text, but it's going to start one character further over. So this is going to be faster. It's just gonna to look to that recursive call like there's one less character. And it's gonna save me a lot of time by not making a bunch of copies. And it's also gonna produce less code. So I like this approach, but I totally recognize that it might be a little less readable than you're used to. But I hope it helps you see another way that you can manage strings in the future. Now this recursive call, again, is going to return a pointer that pointer is going to be the new value that this child node needs to point to. So that's why I'm just assigning it to itself right here. Okay, now at this point, we are almost done with delete. Now, the last thing I need to do is check to see if we need to delete any intermediate nodes, okay, right? Because we might delete a node and then as we recurse back up the tree, we may have a bunch of other nodes we need to delete. And so here, we're just gonna check to see, so if, deleted and let's say node has children equals false. So we always have to check this. We always have to check to see if we have a node that doesn't have children. If it has a, if it has child nodes, we just wanna leave it be. But if it doesn't have child nodes, then that means we can probably clean up something. And we also have to make sure that this node is not terminal. And then down here, so if this happens, if we have deleted a node, so we're recursing back up the tree. So if we've deleted a node in a recursive call and that and the current node has no children and the current node is not terminal, then we can free this node and basically just reclaim some memory. So we're gonna free this node, basically do the same thing we did up above and node equals null. And then here we're going to return our node. So now we're closer to done. We just have one little issue and that is this node has children function uh, that I keep calling, but it doesn't actually exist yet. So let's go up and just implement that really quick. Um, it's gonna return a Boolean, node has children, and we're gonna pass in a try node pointer. And then of course, if the node is null, 
Then we'll just return false because there's nothing here to see. But otherwise, let's just check to see if it has children. So we'll go and i equals zero to numcare. So we're just gonna go through each of the elements in this array. And if any of these children, so let's say if no children i is not equal to null, then we know there's at least one child. And so there's at least one child, so we can return true. It does in fact have children. And otherwise, when we get done with the whole loop, if we haven't found anything, then we can return false. And note that this is one of the slower operations in our try here. And this is why in the delete operation down here, this is why you notice that I'm checking deleted. I didn't really have to do this, but it allows me to avoid extra calls to this node has children function because that's kind of expensive and I'd like to avoid that. So checking the deleted first, basically if this turns out to be that we didn't delete anything, it's not gonna bother checking the rest of these. And so that's gonna speed things up a bit. And there are some other optimizations you could do to speed up deletions a bit, but for today, but for today I think this will be okay. So now let's jump down to main and see, make sure that everything actually works. So let's come down here and delete some strings and we'll pass in the address of root and let's remove kin and let's remove cat. And then I'm just gonna print out my try again and let's just make sure that it actually works. And now if we come down, we compile it and we run it. It seems to work. So naturally we would wanna do a little more testing to guarantee that I haven't messed anything up. There's a lot going on in that delete function. And if you think I did make a mistake, which is actually completely possible, let me know down in the comments. But I hope this is helpful. It rounds out our try example. Like this video if you found it useful. Subscribe if you wanna take our relationship to the next level and not miss my next videos. And until the next one, I'll see you later.